my friends and welcome back to the bench and today we're going to be testing Vallejo or Vallejo Game Air Paints. Now I did test their Game Air Paints uh, a year or two ago, it's been out a while. Air meaning airbrush, they're made for airbrushing. And I did like them quite a bit and um, I had trouble spraying mine, I had to go up to a larger nozzle as I mentioned in the video on how to spray them. And uh, once I went to a larger nozzle, to a 0.5, I had no problem. But since then, um, certain airbrushes do push the paint out. So it does depend on the airbrush. But these, new formula, are supposed to be sprayed easily through a 0.3 or larger. And um, a couple of early testing proving this is correct. It does work great. We're going to do that today. Now, let's go over the differences from the old Game Air and the new game air and they made a difference in the label on purpose because it's a new formula and they're going to keep some of the old colors before they fade them out into the new one and uh, that's your way of knowing if you got the new formula or not all right I have cheat notes here right here from uh, Vallejo I went to their website and a couple of uh, promotional materials they released on these and with these we have an increased ultra fine pigment loading Improve opacity, and it provides exceptional adhesion to prime surfaces. Um, you can spray directly from the bottle, they recommend now. Um, but just like before, I thinned mine a little bit before. Um, and the new formula, I believe, doesn't need any thinning. And they also now have a new clear bottle. Uh, the old bottle, let me grab one here, was foggy. See, it was kind of frosted and see the new one it's even a different design right there and you can see it is crystal clear whereas the old one has that frosted look it was affecting the color you didn't quite know what it was unless you put a little dot of it on here and you can kind of see what you were getting um, not every color has been uh, transferred over yet I believe they're gonna work on that but for the time being this is every one where I ordered them they had I think I'm missing a couple of browns or a tan other than that, this is what they have. Now, there's no metallics yet in this lineup because the metallics in the old lineup, the formula couldn't really be changed to this new formula. So you can still stick with the old ones. I think they're going to keep the old formula for, like, see, silver, chainmail. And uh, so they're going to stick with that for these. That's why there's no metallics. It actually says there are no metallics because the formula really couldn't be changed. But the opaque colors are changed. And... Um, and they believe for the better. Some slightly changes in the color hues. I don't know. I don't have all of the ones that kind of counter it. But what we're going to do today is we're going to spray all of these. Uh, on camera, I divided these up. See the four? We're going to do these four on camera. We're going to spray over prime spoons. I used this aqueous surfacer. And we're going to spray it over white spoons without uh, primer. It would have been saved me a lot of time. So what I did was I took these scuff pads from the automotive store. And I just rough them up. And it leaves, leaves a nice grip for the paint to stick to. So we're going to go just like that over some plastic. And behind the scenes, I did a few gumpla pieces to see how it goes on that. Really, it's made for miniatures and figures. And um, I believe it should work for some Gundam, but uh, we'll find out. And um, also, for the yellow and the red, I'm going to spray some over pink. And this is a wonderful primer from uh, Tamiya. Um, it really lays down beautifully. Look at that. And it's great for spraying yellow and uh, reds on top of, believe it or not, I like to spray yellow on top of red. It adds a really nice depth to it, and uh, you'll see as we uh, do the test. So we're going to spray those two over all, all of the spoons, and the rest we'll just do over the two. And um, that's it. I'll show you how we're going to clean it. I'm going to clean it using super ultra hot water I brewed for my Keurig machine, my K-cup machine. I brew a nice big giant... Uh, travel jug with it and I keep a lid on it. it stays hot here at the bench flushes right out it's the greatest thing to use for this now you can thin it a little bit if you want to stretch it with some flow improver their own thinner just a couple drops if you want to stretch it I think you can or ultimate airbrush thinner I find this works great on all brands of thinner and uh, it is specifically for, with capital all acrylic modeling paints these come with a chart uh, believe it or not, it says shake well before use. Um, 
Also, the aqueous, or I think it's the acrisian, they say you have to shake their, their thinners for some odd reason. But you can use that also um, for thinners. But according to the claim, we can use them directly out of the bottle, and that's what we're going to do. So uh, let me go grab my hot water. It's still in my brewer behind me here, and uh, we'll get to doing it. We're going to use this gallery, Advanced uh, 68, GH AD 68 airbrush. I put the .38 needle in that. And, uh, oh, if you stay tuned to the very end of the video, an ultimate super mega surprise announcement. And uh, we are excited for this one. So stay tuned for that. It involves an airbrush. All right, guys. Um, all right. I'm just going to show you uh, these four colors. I'm going to pull these out. We'll do these four on camera. And I'm going to put them right into the cup. So we're going to shake them up. Actually, here, let me grab my four E's. It's easy to grab. Apologies to Robert Kennedy, who happens to have a sale today. 25% off all, all of these racks are 25% off. See them in the back? All of them. And uh, free shipping, too. So that's a killer sale. I'll, I'll also put it on my community page to remind you guys. But anyway, here we go. Everybody's shifting up here. This thing's vibrating the whole table. Let's pick it up a little bit. And that is it. You can hear it's thin. Now see that it's got a safety lock cap on. They've added this also. Let me show you what I do with this. I get my, my universal clippers here. And you break the seal. I like to get rid of the seal. It kind of gets in the way. Sometimes it'll lock up and hold the cap up. So I like to just cut the seal right off. And there we go. And then I actually know it's a fresh bottle. It's a bottle that's been opened versus a fresh bottle. All right. So I'll meet you at the booth. We're going to pour some directly into the airbrush. We're going to spray some spoons. And uh, let's test this paint out. All right, my friends. Here we are at the booth. Let's start with, I just grabbed any one. I stirred them. I mean, I shook them all up with the mixer. This is bloody red. And uh, I'm going to show you directly going into the airbrush. So... Alright, let's crack this open, first time. Alright, let's see. It's hard for me to see around this camera. Here we go. Here we go. I don't know how much we'll need. We're going to do three spoons on this. The others are mostly going to have two spoons. There we go. So I'll cap this off. I also brought to the booth, like I said, I brewed uh, 14 ounces of hot water this is boiling water inside this uh, travel mug and we're gonna clean it out we're gonna show you how to clean out the Vallejo paint let's see how we go there we go let me check the air pressure all right we're gonna turn it up a little bit I'm gonna go up to like 25 here we go now this being an acrylic you want to stop a little bit, but already it doesn't have that beating up that traditional acrylics have. See how it's kind of sticking, almost like a lacquer? I think that's terrific. And this is why these are my favorite acrylics for airbrushing, hands down. Now, um, I like to do a distance, about five, six inches, because it goes on, it dries really fast that way. It's kind of creating its own primer, I call it. You know, nice rough kind of surface for the next layer to stick to. I'll actually we'll put this down. Let's go on to the white. This is the spoon that I roughed up. This is just so you guys can see what these look like over different bases. Now when I go in the next time I'm gonna go a little closer. We'll let this dry. It'll dry actually within a minute. And then we'll go with the pink. This is the pink primer from Tamiya. You can see it's actually deeper looking already. All right, we're going to go back to the gray. And here we go. We're going to go in a little closer here. Now, these will self-level, according to the company. They'll dry flat. All of their uh, acrylics are, are all flat. It'll dry to a flat finish, and it will self-level. Even though it looks rough, it ends up drying beautifully. And... Uh, 
They do dry really nice. But look at that. It's going on much better than uh, many of the other acrylics I've tested. In fact, I've done a video on how to get your acrylics to lay down because it's a whole slower process of very light coat, drying it off, light coat, you know, and um, this really, really uh, doesn't even require that. I'm going to put a few more drops in so we can do this last spoon here. This is over the yellow, I mean the yellow, over the pink primer. I will put these in my dehydrator, let them dry. Very good. I will go off and finish the rest. Uh, ah, these are good. These are ready to go. All right, guys, I'm going to show you how we uh, clean out the airbrush. Let me grab that hot water. I put it on behind me. Let me grab a pipette, an eyedropper. I'll pause it. I'll be right back. All right, guys, here we go. Here, let's open up the hot water here. Super hot water. All right, got the pipette. All right, get a Q-tip, or I should say a cotton swab, the ones that I use here. All right, you can see what's in here. So what I'm going to do is, let me, get a, let me get a jar here. One second, guys. I wanted to get a jar so I can show you everything without leaving the... Now what I like to do is, I like to pump in and out using my pipette. And when I come back in, I'm going to hit the edges wherever I can see paint sticking. Now don't get that paint out of there. And get everything out. Alright? See how clean we are already? Now these... Uh, these cups clean really good on the gallery airbrushes. All right, here we go. We're going to do it again. I would you like to do this over my uh, area where I have a thing that catches everything. So now we are good. Now we're almost there already. I'm going to get my cleaning jar. All right? Now you don't have to because I'm in the booth. I could just blast this out, but I'm doing this so if you guys aren't doing it in the booth, if you're doing it back at the bench. All right, now we're going to come in with more hot water, but this time we're going to do the reverse and look how much is still in. See it? And this hot water really, really gets this clean. Now, do not blow this dirty water back through again. It's counterproductive. Just get it out of here. And you can use an airbrush cleaner, an, an acrylic cleaner. And uh, I have my own recipe, and I have a few others. Uh, Iwata's I use. I have a few. Uh, I actually have Vallejo's own. Now, look, I'm going to back flush it again. It's already not even close to as dirty as it was. I'm going to wipe this. I'm not going to go crazy because I'm going to do more airbrushing. But uh, I do like to get, if I have trouble with the sides, go like this. But these polished cups on the galleries really clean up really nice. It will go in here. And then uh, we can hit it with a final shot. Like I said, you can hit the booth two and uh, what I like to do is hot water with an old brush and I like to get in here and this cleans off the nozzle quick and this looks like it's taking a long time I mean where are we a minute and a half in and uh, we're just gonna go into the next color and uh, I really got this down really quickly it's taking even longer just cuz I got to show you guys you know on camera all right let's blast the rest now ready we're gonna shoot into this paper towel nothing red see if it's shooting red it's still dirty it. Not dirty at all. We're ready to go. Run some air through it, kind of air dry it, and look at the front. Look at that. I cleaned it all out using the brush. We are good to go just using hot water. Now, if you're going to use a cleaner, and it's Vallejo, I do like using their own brush cleaner, but the hot water really does the trick. And maybe sometimes at the end when I'm done spraying like six colors, I'll shoot some of their cleaner into it. Um, but the hot water, more than enough. All right, let me grab another color and we'll check that out. All right, guys, now for the next color, what do I grab here? Electric blue. All right, I shook it up and I'm going to show you how to thin it a little bit. Even though you just saw we could spray it straight out, but sometimes you want to stretch your buck, right? So I'm going to pour some in here. Not much because we're only going to do two two spoons here. See it? And it is kind of thick. 
but you don't want to break it down a lot. So we'll go ahead with the universal brush cleaner. Now let me grab their chart. One second, guys. There we go. In the background, I'm grabbing this chart. Did they give you this chart when you water there? Thinner, obviously you can see it, right? They also have the ultimate airbrush cleaner too. I bought the set. And look at the chart. It's every brand of paint. As of the time, I guess. And uh, it's telling you how much you can thin it. Now at the time I got this and I laminated it, I put this over it so it wouldn't get ruined. I put a dot next to all the colors that I actually had in the in the room here. Um, aqueous, you know, Tamiya. Anyway, check this out. Vallejo Model Air. So, I mean, at the time, I don't think there was Game Air. It was Game Color, but the Game Air line wasn't out, but it's the same formula um, back then. So we're going to use the same ratio. Not much, because it's you could tell it's air, so it's meant to be airbrushed. All right? So only 10 to 20%. It's right in between. That's it. So we're just going to put a few drops, and we're going to stretch it out. All right, comes in a really nice uh, dispenser. That's all. Just want to put a few drops. As we said, it will airbrush. Take my stick, cut in half, and we're just going to clean it up with my cup said don't do the splash. All right, and there you go. Now it's a little bit thinner. See it? And we're ready to go. Let me grab the airbrush. We are cleaned out. All cleaned out. There we go. All right, this we'll just do over the two. We'll go over some gray. Now we're going to head back a little bit. These opaque color, these uh, lighter colors, they go a little slower. Really nice color here. Huh? Really nice color. All right, let me grab the white. See, from a distance, like I said, the first coat, I do like to give it a little dusting. And then uh, if you want to speed it up, I'm doing two at a time. So I could put one down and grab the other one. Just hit it with air. See, I'm going to hit a little bit trigger. Gives you just air. I'm drying it off. And this is how I sprayed acrylics in that test video I did a couple years ago. And it saved a lot of people, according to you guys. According to myself, I was really frustrated spraying acrylics. Until I figured out to go super slow, get a little dry in here. Now I don't have to put it down and grab the other one because I dried it. You can see it's dull. So we're going to go ahead with another coat. Ready? I'm going to go in for the final coat a little closer and a little slower. And look at that. You're going to get a nice wet look, but it's going to dry flat. All right, let's go back in with the other one. This is the one with the primer. All right. Dry it off a little bit. Press is coming on. So you can tell it's already dry. It's already dull, you know, flat. So we're going to go in a little closer, a little slower. Just like the other spoon. A shiny, wet coat. Check it out. It doesn't run like a regular acrylic would just start running off the spoon. It holds on to it. Really impressive, really great formula here. I do like this quite a bit. All right, I'm going to go through the same process with the hot water. Let me grab another color. We'll do two more, and then we'll go over the results. All right, second to last, we have yellow, sun yellow. Already loaded up. Here we go. Let's go over gray first. We'll see how opaque this is. Yellow is usually a tricky color. Looks like it's covering pretty good. All right, let's go over white. All right, and the pink. I do like yellow over red bases, or in this case, pink. You'll see in the end the results, the amount of depth that it gives it. Now, it does change it a bit, the color. So, again, you can go with a lighter, look at that, almost orange. All right, let's go back to the gray. All 
All right, we'll do one more coat on the white. All right, I'm gonna go in for the final coat. Laying down beautifully, just like a lacquer. Let's go back to the gray, finish that off. And back to the pink primer. And there we go. Now I will clean out this airbrush and we'll go on to the final color and I'll show you the results. All right guys, final color of the test. Uh, where are we? Alien purple, a favorite of mine. Uh, already loaded the brush. Let's finish this off. Over the gray first, here we go. Alright, going with the white. Now I can show you my technique. I like to come back a bit again. It's five, six inches. Now I'm going to show you no, no uh, air's coming out, but no uh, paint. You can hear it. And we're going to dry it off in about 20 seconds. These uh, acrylics with air hitting them dry really fast. All right, so we're ready. I don't have to pick up the other gray one. We're going to go back into the white. Ready? I like to go in a little closer, still the same speed. And I try it again quick. And we're ready to go. Last one, closer and slower. Perfect. All right, this is dry already, so we're going to go with the next coat. A little closer. All right, I'm going to dry it off a little bit. As I said, I would show my arm that no paint's coming out. All right, we're looking pretty dry. We're going to go in for the final coat, closer and slower. Oh, there we go. All right, that's the gray. Yep, I put G in the bottom for gray. And that's the white. All right, could use a little bit over here. There we go. All right, I will clean this out. I'll meet you back at the bench. We'll go over all of the colors. All right, here we are at the bench. I told you I sprayed them all. They're all behind me, but I'll grab a few at a time here. And uh, we'll go over these. I'm going to try and go over these as quickly as I can. We'll start from this way and go this way. This is Scorpy Green. All right. Now, I'm showing the green first because I brushed it on. And uh, a few tests behind the scenes of brushing it. It really isn't meant to be brushed. For that, you go with the game color, not game air. They remove the word air and replace it with color. Brushes on much better. But that's it brushed on. I thought I'd show you guys. You know, that's one coating. I did a few coats on, um, geez, about a week earlier I was testing it. It, it really kind of, it ends up looking too chunky. But flip it over, this is over white by the way. Look at it airbrushed. And this is over gray. A little bit of a deep tone to it. Look at that. Now I sprayed it over this gray primed gun. I use it for testing. Here's a chrome test I did. But look at how nice it sprayed onto this gun. Nice and even. Look at that. So there you go, Scorpy Green. Don't brush it on. Oh, but it does airbrush on beautifully. Look at that. All right, next up is where are we at? Scarlet Red. All right, Scarlet Red, white and gray. All right, here it is over primer, gray primer. You can see it's dark. This is over white, much brighter. This is over pink. So there you go. There's your three. Beautiful color, but look at how even and nice this dries. Really, really nice acrylic paint. All right, let's go. Scurvy green. All right, this is over gray. This is over white. You can see it's a little brighter over the white. All right, moon yellow. All right, this is over white. Hold on. Over gray, you can see the difference. White, gray. I'll put it this way. 
and then over pink. Whoa! Check this out. Three different shades. I mean, this really changes it up quite a bit. It's not as orange in person as it is on camera. Adds a lot of contrast, but that's white, and that is over pink. Now, this is probably the true color it's supposed to be out of the jar, I would imagine. So, there you go. However, really good. I mean, that's gray, and that's yellow on top. This is the pink. Uh, it covers really good, and yellow is a tricky color. All right. Did a bunch of experiments with this one. This is Imperial Blue. All right, over gray, over white. You can see the tone right there. It's completely different. If you want to see these colors longer, guys, I guess you can pause the video as I hold these up. All right, this is it sprayed on top of white. I wanted to try it on top of white plastic kit, so here it is over a Gundam uh, foot. It's molded in white, and there we go. Look at that. I didn't get in there with all the crevices. I just wanted to see how it would take to the to the plastic of the Gundam, and uh, it, it did pretty good. And this is a chassis of a car kit. Some old used kits. I keep these around for testing paint. Like, again, I didn't go in with any details. I just wanted to see how it would cling to it, and uh, it held up. It held up pretty good. All right, let me clear these out and get another batch. Oh, just like magic, another batch of pears. Here we have ghost green. I'm a sucker for these mint greens. I really do like these. This over white, over gray. Pretty close. You can see the white. It's a little bit of a lighter tone to it. Again, you're going to want to put them over primer, and I'll show you why in a minute. All right, this is, where are we here? Athena Skin. All right, that's over gray, obviously. Yep. Yep. Look at that. Primer white. All right, what do we have here? Royal Purple. All right. It's over gray primer, over white. Oh, it's a little deeper. Pretty opaque, though. These things really cover well. This, I tried an experiment. I tried it over the pink. You can actually see the pink primer right there. Uh, didn't do much. I was just curious. So pink, white, gray. It's a beautiful gray, this right here. Somber gray. Look at this. That's over gray primer. This is over white. It's a really nice looking gray. All right, nocturnal red, beautiful deep red here, over primer, gray, over white. You can kind of see the difference right there. This is leather brown. I use these for some of my car kits for sure. All right, over primer, over white. It's got banged up a bit because I think I stacked the spoons when I went to put it away. And obviously, being over just white plastic, it's going to just peel off. But the color itself is beautiful, over gray, over white. It really does look like leather seats. All right, let me clear these off, grab another batch. All right, here we go, another batch. We have turquoise, no fancy name, just turquoise. All right, here we go. Gray, white. Again, it's just beautifully smooth. It dries, <clears throat> excuse me guys, it dries beautifully. All right, fire, no, orange fire. I thought it was fire orange. Over gray, over white, big difference there. What do we have here? Oh, abyssal, abyssal turquoise. So this is turquoise with a name. All right, over gray. White and over black. There's a black spoon that was sitting in the booth, so I grabbed it and seen how it went on, and it went on pretty good. That's straight on plastic right there. It's black, white, gray. All right, night blue. This is over the gray, over white. Pretty close, however. Boom. That's why you need primer. Look at that. 
right off. Let me get rid of this tape. And uh, and uh, testing it thoroughly on the uh, primed one, you're in good shape. So that's what I'm going to show you over primer and over white. I did the same with this, which is a beautiful, another light gray, wolf gray, beautiful color. That's over gray. That's over white. Of course, when I did it, it peels right off. So make sure you prime first. Beautiful color, though. Look at that. These are pretty close, actually. Look. See, it's a little darker on the primed one. I mean, on the primed one. Hold on. White coming up. Let me get these out of the way. You can see the white. White is off white. No, dead white. And uh, over gray, over white. Look at it. It's a beautiful, beautiful white. Uh, and um, kind of impressed. White's pretty tricky. They really got it down here. I think this is a really good white. All right, let me grab these off the table. One more batch. All right, let's start to wrap this up. Here we go. Ultramarine blue over gray over white. We have magic blue, nice bright standard blue here over gray over white. Pretty close. That's how opaque these things are. I mean, they're really close. So I guess you can use a white or a gray primer. But uh, the shading isn't going to be that drastic unless you do like I did over pink. Golden yellow, gold yellow. All right, here we go. Over gray, you can see the gray tone right there. Oops, hit the camera. Over white, over pink. Look at that. So first one's gray, second white. Third, this one here is over pink. Pink. Look at that. All right, what do we have here? Rosy flesh. Hold on. Over gray. Over white. I don't even have to look. I can tell. Yeah, you can just tell. See it? You can see the shading right there. I think if I kept going with layers, it'd probably end up looking like this. It's so opaque, you know. All right, we have alien purple. Over gray. G. There it is. White. There we go. These are the ones I did on camera. Look at how even and beautiful this paint dries. All right, another one on camera. The last, last four are the ones I did on camera. Bloody red. All right, I can tell that's gray. Yep. Gray, white. Look how bright it is on the white. And this is over the pink. Check that out. That is a beautiful red. Wow. All right. Electric blue, we did this on camera. This is gray. This is white. Gray's right here. Really bright in the in the white base. Wow, it looks great. Another great color. Last color is sun yellow. Alright, I could tell this is gray right here. Yep, gray, white, and pink. Gray, white, pink. Kind of like the other one. Ah, that's much more orange, this one. Much more golden in color. So the color, the standard color would be the white in the middle, obviously. You lose a, get a little bit deeper tone over the gray and a complete change over the red. Up oh, pink, I should say. And there you go. That is the test. Uh, wonderful lineup of paints. Really inexpensive. I don't even think I paid three bucks a jar. It might have been less. I think it was two change. So, uh, yeah, really, really hard to beat at that price point. Then if you get one of the thinners, either theirs or the Ultimate, you can put a few drops in, you can stretch it out, maybe go a, a bottle and a half, so you can really stretch it out too. I wouldn't brush it on as I showed, it's made for airbrushing, but uh, really good results, really, really good results. I believe more colors to come. Uh, again, there might be more browns or grays, I, I, I don't know if they had every one in stock, but there's a few more colors I might have missed, but I tried to get every one I could. But uh, there it is, I recommend it. It cleans off great. Here's the airbrush, I didn't even break it apart, I just did the quick cleaning like I did on camera and uh, I cleaned it right up and I recommend a primer of course um, that gives it more of a grip and uh, even the even the company recommends it over a primer I, I spray all my um, 
acrylics over primers. I only did the white to see the results. I knew it wouldn't be good. That's why I roughed the spoon up so it would stick. If you, if you can't use primer, you've got to have a rough surface. And uh, that is all. All right. Let me give you a quick, special, exciting announcement. Let me clear some of this out. And uh, wait till you see this. All right, guys, just going to go over this quick, quick. This isn't available to the public yet, but soon, I'm hoping within a couple weeks, um, we're going to do a full full breakdown of this. And um, it is the Barbatos Rex Swallowtail Airbrush made in conjunction with Gallery Airbrush. It's part of the Ace series. There I am, my name. I'll show you the brush in a second, quick, quick. It includes three needle sizes. Check this out, a 0.28 mil, a 0.5, and a 0.7. That'll really push some paint out. So we've got some detail, standard work, and really uh, a really big nozzle for really covering the bases there. We go almost into extra fine detail all the way, all the way up to wide. It's part of the A series. Now their original was part of the advanced series. So we're not gonna go into that detail. I'm just gonna show you the brush quick so you see what it looks like. There's a little note in here that I wrote for the company, and uh, I'll go into details how we ended up collaborating, and um, it's a wonderful product. Check it out. I'll let it speak for itself. As I said, I'll go into more detail. It is a beefy nozzle system. It is comfortable, extra long for uh, different size hands. I started using uh, a grip pistol grip style airbrushes more lately because I'm doing so much testing that my fingers starting to cramp whereas it, I can go much longer using it this way the three needles the two cup sizes it's just a wonderful wonderful product um, yeah we're gonna go over it soon check this out my name is on the brush co-artist so it's between the gallery and myself and uh, these will be going on sale very soon very soon and um, we have a little bit of a sale when it launches. We're going to do a giveaway. Very excited for this. And then uh, after this launch, I guess the next thing, the next milestone will be to get to that 100,000 subscribers. And we'll be going over that soon, too, what we're giving away. But coming very, very soon, this awesome, awesome, beautiful airbrush. And the packaging is great, even with the magnetic holder. And, uh, yeah, so that was it. That's quick. Just to uh, wet the whistle, so to speak. Uh, Get this out there that it's coming soon, and I am very excited for this. It's called the Swallowtail, based on the shape of the uh, Swallowtail Butterfly, which is a rare sight. And, um, yeah, it is the Collaborative Edition Airbrush set, and uh, we are excited and thrilled for this. I can't wait for you guys to try this. And we are going to do a very detailed video when it's available. I don't want to tease you guys. This is a tease as it is, but when we go to use it, I'm going to have it so you guys can purchase it right away. Anyway, guys, that is it. We will see you in the next video. God bless you all. Like the video, please. Subscribe if you haven't already. You've got to be uh, in the know, particularly when we reach the uh, big plateau of 100,000, the giveaway. We'll have one of these. We'll have a spray booth, an air compressor, a complete massive giveaway like you have never seen before. And uh, that's in celebration when we reach that special milestone. Anyway, guys, have a great one. I recommend those Vallejo paints. I love them. They're fantastic. Uh, gave me no trouble at all. I really do like them. Um, you can get them anywhere. I guess I'll put a few links below where you can get them. And uh, consider joining my Patreon. I'll put that link below too where I'm answering uh, you guys' questions directly. I texted a few of you guys today, and we've gone back and forth. Actually, Patreon got to see this first as I really broke it down, and uh, we looked at it a little closer on the Patreon channel. Anyway, guys, God bless you all. You guys are wonderful. We will see you all over the weekend in the next video.